I think the agreement is very significant because it comes in the wake of discussions about acquiring a nuclear deterrent in South Korea. And what we've seen since President Yoon came into power back in May in 2022, too, that, again, this idea of acquiring a nuclear deterrent became more salient in South Korea. And the deal basically uh, uh, is an exchange for acquiring a nuclear deterrent that the United States has agreed to uh, up its nuclear presence in in South Korea, in and around South Korea, agreed to a nuclear consultation group, and agreed to uh, creating more transparency in uh, the United States' relationship with South Korea in terms of its defense. And I think these are significant and long-lasting. Yeah. So, you know, there's talk about nuclear armed submarines being deployed in, to South Korea from time to time, involving South Korea in their, nu in their nuclear sort of philosophy in, on the peninsula. Um, is, is, is that going to be enough? And, and how involved do you think Seoul will really be in what the US will be doing? Well, there has been growing concern in Seoul in terms of uh, will Seoul's uh, uh, interests be considered in some kind of nuclear crisis with North Korea. And through the formation of a nuclear consultation group with the United States, uh, this allows Seoul to be involved in the decision of when, how, and at what time uh, nuclear weapons could be deployed within the region. The uh, periodic uh, movement of nuclear submarines in and out of the areas around South Korea send the strongest of signal, deterrent signals to North Korea that if they do use tactical weapons to achieve some kind of military gain uh, on the peninsula, that they would, of course, um, uh, suffer the repercussions. So I think that these are really important in terms of a deterrence, but also increasing Seoul's role in sharing a burden and understanding and formulating nuclear policy within the region. Yeah. How is the North likely to respond? Will they, will they see it as a deterrent? Well, what I expect North Korea to do in the coming months uh, is very much what they've been doing in 2023. Uh, they've tested a host of missile systems, both in terms of range and capabilities. And these missile systems are really part of a saturation strategy to saturate the anti-ballistic missile systems that are located in South Korea, in Japan, and throughout the region. Uh, the logic in North Korea is to try and saturate these capabilities to push forward on some kind of um, peace settlement uh, to preserve the regime. And I think that uh, this agreement will anger the North Koreans. They will likely test more and test the resolve of the uh, Seoul and Washington and uh, likely create more turbulence within the region. Yeah. You know, of course, uh, the US has made it very clear they'll stand with Taiwan. Do you think <laughs> South Korea now becomes another nation that will really rely on the US should they come under attack? Well, I think there's a clear distinction between the relationship between Taiwan and the United States, uh, as well as Seoul and the uh, South Korea and the United States. South Korea and the United States have a formal alliance. There's 35,000 U.S. troops and their associated capabilities based in, um, in, in South Korea. And don't forget that the Japanese and the Americans and the, and the South Koreans have the GSOMA agreement, uh, an information sharing agreement to bolster their defense. And what we've seen under the UN administration is much better relations between these three states, joint training to try and send that message to, uh, to uh, North Korea. But Taiwan's a different story. There's no guarantee for Taiwan's defense outside uh, of the context of a forced reunification or something that the, perhaps the mainland would do, a surprise attack or something. So this is a fundamental difference. And I think that um, it's a bit of, of, of oranges and apples in terms of comparisons. But I do think that um, countries within the region are looking at this uh, bolstered relationship as a sense that the United States is committing to the region and anchoring itself in the region and trying to bring confidence to its allies and partners in the region. Yeah. Do you think it will be a deterrent, this agreement, for other nations considering their strategic futures, particularly when it comes to nuclear? At this particular stage, I think it's pretty clear that by 2020 or 2030, the Chinese are determined to uh, produce about 2,000 or 3,000 nuclear weapons. So they are enhancing their nuclear uh, option. Um, and this is going to be a, a challenge for all the countries within the region. Uh, I think that Russia is going to continue to expand its capabilities because it feels that these are important capabilities to push out the United States and, and dilute its influence. 
And this will send strong messages to Seoul, to Tokyo, to Taiwan, uh, in that it will raise questions, is the nuclear deterrent the best way to secure their uh, security? And at this stage, I think the consensus is that acquiring a, a nuclear deterrent in Seoul or Tokyo or Taiwan is not in their interest. It's better to be part of the nuclear umbrella of the United States. And through doing that, they can ser secure their interests, deepen their relationship, and hopefully enhance their relationship over the long term. Stephen, the, the South Korean president seems quite the character, breaking into Seoul <laughs> and uh, serenading the president and, and all those at the dinner. Uh, it was wonderful to see. I wish I could sing as well. Uh, <laughs> but I think it really... It really um, it really sends the message that um, leaders within this region, whether it's in Seoul or Tokyo or Taiwan, have not only a security partnership with the United States, but a start partnership that goes beyond um, security. It's cultural, it's political, it's friendship, and it's deeply uh, wedded to shared ideas about a rules-based order in the Indo-Pacific. And um, the singing is great, but I think the content of the discussions uh, of the discussions and the relationship are so much deeper than that song. Yeah, indeed. But uh, f fascinating to see as well. Good to have you on, Stephen. Take care. Thank you.